Funding for Firehouse Kitchen is provided by RW Prime, good times, great steaks. Best Market, your neighborhood's first choice. Riverhead Bay Motors, specializing in Subaru and Volkswagen. Challenge Self-Defense Center, classes for men, women, and children, kick with the best. Fire News, serving heroes since 1973. Gentle Dental, located in Eastport, New York. Rene Dumang, fine jewelry located in East Islip, New York. DiCarlo Food Service, servicing the food industry since 1963, located in Farmingville, New York. And FirefightersFashions.com, the swag of firefighters apparel. Very nice episode again here today. I am with my father-in-law, Anthony, for our third time on Firehouse Kitchen. I keep having Anthony back because people keep e emailing me that we gotta get Anthony back on the show. So he tells me. <laughs> well, we're, sure. we're filming today at Friends of Firefighters. Friends of Firefighters is here in Red Hook, Brooklyn. And I mentioned at the end of every show, if you want to donate to Friends of Firefighters, go to www.friendsoffirefighters.org. But this is kind of special for you. Oh, there we yeah. are. Brooklyn's in the house. I grew up about a mile from here. Uh, as a matter of fact, I came down my block this morning and uh, very emotional uh, coming down and just visualizing all the things I used to do. We're back talking back in the 50s. I left here in 58 as a teenager. Uh, all the things and the games and my friends coming down, there, ghostly figures coming down the stoops in my imagination. And it, Kind of uh, emotional, son. Are, are we making a Brooklyn dish? We're gonna make a Brooklyn dish. It's called bolognese. Uh, bolognese is a sauce that originated in Bologna, Italy. It's basically a meat sauce, but we're gonna bring it up a few notches. Uh, there's a number of ways you can make it. There's a whole bunch of variations. You can pretty much do whatever you want uh, with it, as long as there's a basic meat sauce. It could also be a vegetable bolognese, but I like meat and vegetables, so in my mind, the vegetables counteract any negativity that one might say about having too much meat in their diet. We're also going to kick it up a, a notch further by putting some bacon. And bacon, hey, makes everything taste good. Bacon and or peanut butter and chocolate, but we can't go there. I love filming with this guy. I don't, I, I, I'm going to sit down when you come on the show. <laughs> this guy, he's got everything. He's got everything. Um, now, bolognese, it comes from where? Bologna, Italy. It's it above Florence. It's probably northern Italy. You have bo bo Bologna roughly Florence, Naples, and then going down to the boot and going off the boot, you have Sicily. Now my, Naples is also on the sea and so is, Sicily is surrounded by the sea and. That's where you are, right? Yeah, well my, my, my mother's, my, my mother's side came from Naples and my father's side came from Sicily. So I like to think I have the best of both worlds when it comes to being Italian. So I already have some water boiling here and I have the, flame on this pan. I'm gonna put some olive oil in. We're gonna crisp up some bacon. You okay. can use brazook if you want. Uh, put some bacon. Uh, pancetta. We love bacon uh, in the firehouse. Open this up. So I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here, just to drizzle. Uh, have bacon ready. So that we can get our bacon. We're gonna throw our bacon in. Be careful, it might sizzle. Okay. Get the bacon in. Just gonna move this around a bit. All right, so we got our ingredients here. We got bacon and olive oil. How much better can you get? Oh, garlic. Some garlic. Throw some garlic in here. Whoops. How much garlic? The more the better. As I said, I'm half Sicilian, so you can never have enough garlic. All right, so explain all these ingredients. Okay, we have what's called a mirepoix with regard to vegetables and celery, carrots, onions. I'm gonna put this into the pot as well, along with the bacon and the garlic. How can you go wrong? This always is, not always, but I always use it when I'm doing a stew or a, a soup, which maybe we can make in another episode. Ooh, 
So we'll just he's already, he's already inviting himself back already on Pie House Kitchen. All right. Put this in. Let me just throw this around a bit. My, my favorite was on the first episode. I tell Anthony, I'm like, talk about the fire department a little bit. So I go, Anthony, did you want to be a fireman when you get older? And he looks right at the camera and goes, no, nah, I want to be a police officer. Sorry about that, but at the time, when I moved out to Long Island from Brooklyn, I wanted to be a police officer, but there was a certain height requirement. Uh, so I went into the corporate world. Almost. And I, and I was very happy with what oh I my, did. Almost five. But almost five eight. Um, anyway, mushrooms. we're going to put some mushrooms in here too now. Uh, and I tend, I have a tendency to go overboard with a lot of the vegetables that I put in. Uh, again, I think that's part of my Sicilian heritage. Overpowering with a lot of things and a lot of vegetables and it's spices, etc. It's good for us. Lots so, of very good. So, macaroni, pasta, it's all the same thing. When I was a, a kid, I was going to say back in Brooklyn, but that's where I am, um, when my mom would make macaroni, it was with a regular sauce. And there were sauces and meatballs and brujol, um, all kinds of uh, meats. And uh, I liked it, but I never really ate much. Uh, I, since then, I've learned to love pasta, but I've heard of a word called carbohydrate. So now you're sort of, do I eat it or I don't eat it? So when I do Arms eat it, when I do eat it, I like to have a unique kind of a sauce. So again, I kicked this up quite a bit with the um, uh, the bacon and the mushrooms. So it's sort of a vegetable meat bolognese. Um, now my house, grew up, Irish family, nine kids. I never saw pasta like this. I ate spaghetti. I never, you know, I never, we never had linguine. Right. Had, you this see, the spaghetti, we had roller coasters, the curly things, that's what we call roller coasters. So uh, that was my pasta experience. Mm -hmm. And we always had lots of pasta because you could feed that long kids way. Sure. On three pounds of pasta. Sure, yeah, sure. Pounds. Yeah. All right, so we're throwing this in now? No, 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 okay. no, no. I'm going to put a little salt, a little pepper. OK. And, and this is and cooking stir. very, very nice. So what are we throwing this pasta in? OK, we're going to wait. First, you have to put the sauce in. The pasta's going to go in. Oh, all right. I got all excited that I was throwing yeah. pasta in. All right. Now, this is two cans of a regular sauce. You can get any kind of good sauce in a can. This happens to have basil in it, so I don't have to add it. I have to ask you a question. And it's crushed tomatoes. Have two cans, even though it's in three bowls. OK, it's two cans, even in three bowls. Lovely. Now, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> I've been waiting to ask you this question. Go ahead. Because Tony Catapano from here told me the difference between a sauce and a gravy. What is the difference? Why do you call it gravy? Why do you call it sauce? Well, you know what? It's, it's, it's... It's, uh, what do they say? Some say tomato, some, some say tomato. There's a whole bunch of different definitions and reasons All right. why. This is the reason he gave me. Yeah. Are you ready? Well, see, cause he's Italian too. Hopefully he comes we, down and he says hello to us. A gravy is meat based. I was going to say, we, when we grew up, it was called a gravy. Oh, yeah. Because it's meat based. You cook meat in the bottom of it and the sauce yeah. is just tomato. Absolutely. So that's, yeah. that's right? And that's how we always call it because there's always right. a meat sauce. I just thought I'd get family. that in there. I, yeah. thought, I thought you'd be impressed. I knew something. So about. you can grab one of those, Sam. Right. We're going to put this in. So this is two pounds of sauce? No, 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 no. This is two 28-ounce cans of any good store-bought right. crushed tomatoes. Right. Got that built in. Bit of my mess. And now we got to... We can put our pasta in. Let's just dump the pasta in. I love it. OK, now he's dumping the pasta in. While this is all cooking up, let's go to a safety tip. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's safety tip is for all you firefighters out there. Every firefighter should get a portable windshield cutter. They have our hand saws, it takes time to cut that windshield off, but if you take one of these, these bad boys, this is actually made by Rhino, this goes right in, you can cut a perfect square, take that windshield out, so you have nothing blocking you from getting to that victim. I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's safety tip is a portable windshield cutter. Hey, hon, have I ever told you how much I love the Murph's Famous Bloody Mary mix? Yes, sweetheart. So bold, rich, thick. Yeah, and honestly, these wings with Murph's, oh, they're awesome. Remember, with the Murph's, it's one sip, one believer, and apparently, a whole lot more. Was that the Murph in our kitchen? The Murph's in every kitchen, Craig. Normally what I would do is I would take this here chopped meat 
and I would brown it before adding the gravy. I didn't do it, so you can do that if you like. But because I put bacon in and I was getting a flavor and oil from the bacon, I thought I would cook the meat separately in a pan and then add it, thereby being able to remove some or all of unnecessary fat from the meat before I put it in. I like all these. I know, we're probably gonna do that anyway, but some of those who feel, hey, you know what? Why didn't you put it in to begin with? You could have, and then added the sauce after the meat is brown, and we're doing it in a separate step so that we have the opportunity, if we want to, to remove some of the oil before adding it to the pasta. My the flavor will still be high. there. My cholesterol's high, he's looking out for me. You should just say that. Okay. He's looking out for me, sorry. Okay, so, nice. so we're gonna now put this in. We're gonna chop this up so it gets brown. All right, browning it up, enjoying. And we're just gonna continue to brown this up. And in all probability, because this happens to be a low-fat meat, there's not gonna be that much fat gleaned from this. So I'm probably gonna put this right into the pasta sauce as soon as it's finished. Okay, so we're finishing off the meat. We're gonna, with my son-in-law's help, we're gonna add it to the sauce and uh, be ready to be plated. All right, I got so the meat. So we got that. Let me shut this off. Bring out the sauce. Bring out the sauce here. Bring and, out the sauce. And you can All right. just pour it in there. Oh, I feel like I'm making a big stew and pouring it in the barbarian. Here we go. Dumping it in. Ah, darn it, all the grease went Ooh, in. Not even all the grease went Nope, in. there was very, very ah, little. That was all very, very little, very little. All right, so we finished browning up the meat, put the meat in with the sauce. Smells We're going delicious. to add some cheese. You okay. can do this at any time. This is a um, Parmesan cheese, coarsely grated, but you can put any kind of cheese you want. We're gonna add some more. Some Romano cheese. You can use your Pecorino Romano. Very nice. Um, I like cheeses. Parmesan. American and cheese, can we use them? You can, see, you can see how this sauce has really thickened up. And we're going to uh, drain our pasta, which is ready, plate it, and uh, we'll give it a taste. All right, so we'll clean up and we're gonna taste it, and we'll be right back. Well, Dad, I see you've outdone yourself again. It smells absolutely delicious. It looks delicious. I mean, look at this, it's gorgeous. Well, I put some shaved uh, Romano Parmesan cheese, just to, again, kick it up a notch. And I like greenery, so I put some parsley on there. It's appetizing to the eye. It's usually pleasing to the stomach. Learned that a long time ago when I worked in Lynch and Ed, uh, as a young boy. Well, let's give this let's a shot. Let's so, All right. Yep, so yep. Gonna pick it up. Yep. And grab some of the meat. we share. This is how much I love my father, but we don't say it. Here we go. Now, delicious. I use a penne or a gatti, which is a, not a ziti. Um, or penne is a little bigger, it grabs the meat, uh, and I think that does more justice to this particular kind of sauce. But you can use anything, a spaghetti, anything. You want to put it over rice, knock yourself out. Whatever you want to do, it's going to be a good sauce. Just keep going. Yeah, that is really, really, really good. Um, All right, now coming up on this episode, we have Jay Abel from Westchester, Pennsylvania, and his fire department, and he also works for this great company called The Fire Store, who is a very big supporter of Friends of Firefighters mm. here in Red Hook, yes. Brooklyn. And uh, that's it. You can find Sensei Anthony's recipe. I'm getting good now. I hired somebody to handle my recipes and my Facebook, and they're gonna, it's gonna be posted up on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So look for, we'll call it Sensei Anthony's Bolognese Pasta Extravaganza. I like it. Something like that. All right, so we'll be right back with Jay Abel. Firefighter Jay Abel. All right. Your firefighter, right? From the fire store. Um, Jay is a Westchester, Pennsylvania fireman, and I met Jay a couple weeks ago at a breakfast here at Friends of Firefighters, and me and Jay started talking. He was telling me how much he loves Firehouse Kitchen and how you have a great dish that you'd like to make for the show. So I said, Jay, come on over. I didn't know he was bringing the slime from Nickelodeon to go on there. No, I'm just kidding. That's but uh, stuff but what exactly are we making? Uh, we're going to make, uh, actually it's a recipe that my mother-in-law made for me all the time. It was crispy cheesy chicken. It's one of those feel good, not real healthy, but uh, feel good recipes that fill you up in the winter time. You know, we're in the fire house, we come to work. One of the things I liked is five guys, you know, ten guys all cooking together. And, you know, it's not, okay guys, we're going to take care of our cholesterol today. It's what's going to taste the best and 
what are we going to make? And this is something that we would definitely yeah. make in the firehouse. This feeds a lot of people. I mean, you can, it's six to eight pieces of chicken, uh, so you can get you know two crews worth of meal or, or one crew if they're really hungry okay. uh, out of it. And then, uh, you know, it's easy to make. It's something quick. You throw it in the oven and, and you kind of set it and forget it uh, for about an hour. Set it and forget it. Oh, and that's perfect for about an hour. So in case you go out on a run, we got to get back within that hour. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. or you got to send somebody back. Really crispy chicken. <laughs> um, now, the fire store. Yep. Is uh, firestore.com, right? Is a, uh, tell me about the fire store. It's a family owned and operated business. Uh, Jim Whitmer started the business, he was farming. Yep. And uh, he, he saw a need, needed to get some equipment, and uh, started the business basically out of his house and grew it to what it is now. And we're probably one of the largest entities on the uh, on the internet. And we have an outside sales force, which is what I do. Oh, very good. I, I deal direct with firehouses and do training and, and get involved with the specking of equipment and that kind of stuff. I've been talking to Jay. We're gonna get involved with these guys. These guys are these guys are great. They're big supporters of Friends of Firefighters. We're gonna get into that in a second about how we how this how you guys got together. But let's start with our cooking because this is a cooking show. All right, go. The first thing I'm gonna do is prepare the side dish, which is a, a roasted cauliflower. It's a very simple recipe. It's something quick and easy to throw together. It's a uh, uh, head of cauliflower. Just take a pan. Uh, if you can hand me. Right here, and you got it. You just, you know, spray down the pan real quick. You know, cauliflower is very good for cancer. It kills the big cancers. Remember George Carlin? He sells broccoli, but if you really got bad cancer, you gotta get yourself some cauliflower. I don't know if that's factual or true, so. Break it up a little bit, smaller pieces. Like a monster just breaking up little pieces. Break it up. Like Gulliver. Just take some olive oil. Some people say some. I, I like to use a lot. And look at that. Wow. And just go right in the oven. Right in the oven. Go right in the oven. All right. And that's it. You're going to bake that cauliflower right up. Yep. I love it. Just let it go, and, and we're good from there. Now, the uh, crispy, cheesy chicken part. It's crispy. It's cheesy. It's chicken. Now, this has already been cleaned. Our hands are getting a little dirty, but it's OK. <laughs> so, All right. So, Jay, how did you find out about Friends of Fire? <laughs> it's uh, kind of a, a long, not a long story, but it's, uh, I, I was injured in a, in a fire in 2010. Um, it took me about nine months to recover from it. And, uh, you know, after you get back to hanging out with your friends and back to normal life, you start to realize that, you know, life really isn't uh, what it was. And, uh, you know, you still have some emotional baggage to deal with and stuff like that. And, you know, one of the, one of the things that's, uh, Still hard for me to talk about today is uh, the fact that I almost widowed my wife. You know, she didn't, you know, we we're supposed to be happily married forever and, and the death do us part. And unfortunately at 35, the death do us part thing kind of happened faster than, uh, than, you know. So through some, uh, through some friends and uh, a couple people talking to me, they said, hey, why don't you, uh, there's this lady up in New York, you got to meet her, they have this great organization. So I kind of put it on the back burner for a little while and then uh, some other arrows started pointing to come here and I came up and became fast and furious friends with a lot of the people here and, and started started coming up to help out to get the firehouse ready and then Hurricane Sandy happened and uh, basically I was up here for about 26 weekends in a row helping out with Hurricane Sandy, driving up from PA, bringing various crews up from other volunteer fire departments back home and just running them up back and forth and uh, coordinated the toy run and uh, a whole bunch of other really fun stuff. Uh, to help out. Thank you, because a lot of firefighters, firehouses from all over kicked in. You know, usually in New York City, you know, we're not really a disaster zone. You know, you, you never think that we're going to flood. And, uh, and we and we did. We sent people down when Katrina happened, the hurricanes. And the love that we got from other fire departments, it was unbelievable. You know, everybody kicked in. It was great. Oh, yeah. Man. We, we were cooking here for different groups. I was here one weekend with the L.A. guys. And, uh, a bunch of a group from uh, Louisiana, which was just phenomenal, New Orleans, and they were just so much fun to hang out with. But you know, we were going door to door, house to house, and it didn't matter whether you were a fireman or not. We were helping everybody out. Nice, nice. And losing your life, I get it. I almost lost my life. I had a bad fall. Everybody knows that. Let's get something happy. Let's start cooking, okay? Right. Go for it. All right. So first, uh, you got your 68 pieces of chicken breast in the pan. I've already pre-oiled the pan. Um, the next step. Take a bunch of Swiss cheese. Need some cheese to spread out. It's like you're going cards. And you just want to stack it, the more the merrier, uh, all over. I like it. Hit me. 
Well, you're laying out the uh, cards of cheese. Hit me. I'm going to go ahead and get the pans warmed up here. Awesome boys. All right. All right. So we got the cheese on the chicken ready to go. We're going to uh, go ahead and throw our, uh, it's one onion diced up. Just put it right into a pan. A little bit of olive oil on the bottom of the pan. Okay. Just dump the uh, onions in the pan. Take a little half a stick of butter. A little butter. We love butter. I like cheesy chicken. Just let it sit right there and let it simmer. Next step is uh, cream of chicken soup and a quarter cup of cooking sherry. Just take that, dump it right into the pan here. Good. I thought he was going to throw that on me. All right. That's good stuff. <laughs> I thought it was going to get slotted. Uh, like one. Get it all in there. And we take uh, a quarter, uh, half, or quarter cup of cooking sherry right into the soup mix. Gives it a little nice nice flavor all the way through. Yeah, and uh, Nothing to do with thinking it out, ready to roll. OK, good. No, I thickened it out. Right. Gives a little extra you know, chicken breast and Swiss cheese. Just tastes like chicken breast and Swiss cheese. You got to have a little, yeah, a little, little sherry in there. But the, uh, with the onions and the butter, just let it uh, melt down. You want to brown the onions, let them cook up for a couple minutes. It smells good, I know that. Everybody upstairs who works here at Friends of Firefighters is wondering, oh, what's Jay making for us today? <laughs> Some crispy, cheesy chicken. The next thing we're going to do is add our stuffing mix. It's just dry, you know, uh, uh, herb stuffing mix. You just take that, put it right into the, uh, the pot with the onions and the butter. Very delicious. That's what you got, right? Get some milk on that, you don't like cereal. All right. I am that disgusting. All At right. that point, you want to turn the heat down just a little bit. Mix up the onions and the butter. And this is the crispy part of the crispy, cheesy chicken. I can see that. All right, right, we're ready to put this thing together. So we're going to mix the slime and the slop together. The slime and the slop. We're going to go. There we go. Just, am I getting this off the stove? Yeah, you can grab that one. All right, I'm going to turn the stove off while I'm at it. Yeah, that's a good safety tip yes. right there, right? Always turn the stove the off. The safety tip is turn the stove off when you're not cooking it. Unless you're trying to heat your house. I'm kidding. You do not heat the house with the stove. Bad, bad, <laughs> bad. bad. All, right. All right. So that is just that chicken. But the, and I'm mixing this right on? Yep. You know up. what? I'm going to have you do it. Because I don't want to drop everything. Get it right through. So after we spread this out, we're going to throw this right in the oven, right? Yep. How long do we put it in the oven uh, for? 350 for an hour and a half. An right. hour covered, half hour uncovered, and you're good to go. Unbelievable. As we do that, we're going to go to our fire fact right now. And we'll be right back, and we're going to taste this bad boy. All right. Sounds good. Let's go. Hi, I'm Firefighter Ray, and today's fire fact is the horse-drawn or hand-drawn hook and ladder truck. That's where the expression hook and ladder came from. Way back in the day, if there was a fire, we would roll up with our ladders and our hooks, and we'd get to a fire, and we'd pull these ladders off, we'd ladder the building so we'd get in windows, and then it had all these hooks on the back of it so we can open up walls, pull things down. This is our horse-drawn hook and ladder truck, and that's my fire fact for today. Hey, hon, have I ever told you how much I love the Murph's Famous Bloody Mary mix? Yes, sweetheart. So bold, rich, thick. Wait until you try it on the pizza. Remember with the Murph's, it's one sip, one believer, and apparently a whole lot more. Was that the Murph in our kitchen? Murph's in every kitchen, Craig. Pennsylvania cooking. This looks pretty good. Smells good, and you put this on the table. This is like a garnish. Like I just eat things straight. I love it. Well, you know, Ray, before you, before you dive into this, mm. you can't do it unless you have the, the proper apron for you. Oh my goodness! They have you, you know, spelling down the front of it. I absolutely love it. Does it make me look quick? This is awesome. Keep back 300 feet because if I'm cooking, you want to be at least 300 feet away from me because you're either going to get burned or you're going to get sick. I'm joking. Anyway, all right. What should I start with first? Uh, whatever you want, the cauliflower or the chicken. I'm going to start with the cauliflower because I know once I taste that chicken, I'm not going to be able to stop. That's the healthy side. I love cauliflower. I'm going to have one more little piece. Is that good? Okay. All right. Wow. That is delicious. 
unbelievable. Like I said, it's one of those good hearty meals. You can feed you know, a bunch of people right in the station real quick, easy. It's like Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah it's good with the stuffing and everything. Oh. It's the feel good food. Jay, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's wonderful having Pennsylvania in the house. And it's also wonderful all that your company does, the fire store does for friends of firefighters. To find out more about Firehouse Kitchen, go to firehousekitchenshow.com. Friend us on Facebook, go to Twitter, see my little tweets. So I'm tweeting now, like my little tweet dance. All right, and that's it. Jay, thank you again, awesome. It. And we'll see you next time on Firehouse Kitchen. All right, now I'm gonna eat some more of my delicious thing. And thank you, Anthony, for coming on my show. Funding for Firehouse Kitchen is provided by RW Prime, good times, great steaks. Best Market, your neighborhood's first choice. Riverhead Bay Motors, specializing in Subaru and Volkswagen. Challen Self-Defense Center, classes for men, women, and children, kick with the best. Fire News, serving heroes since 1973. Gentle Dental, located in Eastport, New York. Rene Dumang, fine jewelry located in East Islip, New York. DiCarlo Food Service, servicing the food industry since 1963, located in Farmingville, New York. And firefightersfashions.com, the swag of firefighters apparel. Now you can enjoy Firehouse Kitchen at your own leisure with Firehouse Kitchen DVDs. Rewatch your favorite recipes and stories with this DVD collection. 